we talked um, with these friends last night about schooling and education yes. and stuff. So what are your plans for Darwin? Do you have any? Yeah, well, yeah. we do. Oh, of course we do. <laughs> um, and they're flexible because until you're there, you don't really know how it's all going to go. But at this stage, he's going to go to the Steiner School up in Wentworth Falls, so just up the road there's a small sign school, Kindle Hill. Apart from being convenient, it's also just my background, so I'm quite comfortable with that. So tell me about the Steiner philosophy. I, I know very little. Oh, okay. Um, well, Rudolf Steiner started a cigarette philosopher in, in Germany, and he actually started the school for workers from a cigarette factory for their children to go to and attend. But he had very strong... Um, ideas on what it meant to learn and how to educate which were this has been the 19th century yes um so this was so they're walled off schools they called walled off after the cigarette factory but in australia we called them rudolf steiner schools so in germany they're called walled off schools um and he starts with the principles of a uh, threefold being which is the thinking willing and feeling thinking willing, willing. and feeling so action thought and um, emotion so you're a threefold being, you're not just academic or... So all the education is sort of sculpted around morning activities, <laughs> morning activities that are really focused on um, academic aspects. So you're learning about history or English or whatever it is you're learning. Um, middle of the day is about... Um, Singing and percussion. Exactly, emotion. It's about uh, emotional connections, so poetry, language, singing, music. And then in the afternoon, it's it's the will activity, so it could be woodwork, craft, sport, whatever it is that you do. So that's how they structure and divide the day. It varies from kindy right up to high school, obviously, and, and, and evolves, but the way things are taught are usually through story and song in primary school um, and colour. So it's very much focused not on learning to read and write straight away, but learning about the letter A and how it evolves with so the character of the story might have the name starting with A and then they travel to a big mountain and you know, cross the mountain and so how to draw the letters, it's all very um, creative and descriptive in that way. There's a lot of acting, uh, so drama and theatre and eurythmy of course is a big part of it. Right, my experience with it was, was very positive. Um, it certainly didn't hinder me from doing what I wanted to do in life. Um, we didn't do exams, so there's no examinations in Steiner. When I went through, there are some now because it's conforming a little bit to government regulation to get funding. But um, I certainly never sat an exam until university, uh, which is terrifying in itself. Um, but I also didn't get into university conventionally because we didn't do an HSC. So I had I went applied to UTS as a, as a mature age student. And I got in through writing a letter and why I wanted to do what I wanted to do, etc. I was accepted and then from there I had to work out how to study conventionally. <laughs> and I, I didn't have any real science background either, much more in the arts. So it was a very interesting choice to make, doing environmental science. Um, I wouldn't say without its challenges, but it certainly paid off. I did well in the end. So. What are some of the biggest challenges you faced entering the science, the Western science education program? I think it was just the, really just kept feeling like I could um, cope with all the new information. I think it was information overload initially. Um, but oh, with science, way. when things sort of start to connect and make sense, they actually all help each other. So <clears throat> each thing you learn about helps you understand other principles and other things. So I think it was just finding a way to get through that first volume of information and understanding and then being able to knit that together and make sense of it so that it's fairly logical to a large extent. How or has it informed your approaches now, bringing up a child? That's a really good question. Um, I think the challenges are really important. I think they're I think if we make things too easy, we don't grow. I think there really has to be, something has to feel difficult to be valuable once you achieve it. I don't know, to me, I think there's that, 
But that's also a ballerina <laughs> talking. <you know? laughs> that, no pain, no gain, but also that challenge. It's, if something's hard, you're going to keep going until you, until you achieve it because then it's really meaningful and exciting that you've made it. And um, so I, I'm hoping with, with raising Darwin that we can instill that idea that challenges are good and okay. They're not, oh, it's too hard, I don't want to do that, but there's something to, to work towards and, and find ways of going beyond that and, and pushing yourself that way, but enjoying that aspect of it rather than just feeling like everything's too hard or too overwhelming. So. It depends well, on the environment around you yeah. too. Because if other people are sort of going, oh, I don't want to do, mm -hmm. do that. I, you know, like someone who's trying to take themselves to it gets talked down. Yeah. Um, you know, by the people who go, well, why bother? Yeah. No, absolutely. I think your environment is really important. And I think uh, I was very lucky with the Steiner environment that the focus was very much on um, individuals choosing their own path and, and everyone has a different um, strength, potentially. Um, but it's very inclusive. So everyone's at welcome and able to, to try everything. So it's not this only the elite can do this and only the others can do that. It's no, everyone tries everything. Um, how do you know what you're good at or what you like until you've tried it? So, yeah, but you're absolutely right, Ken. I think the environment you're in is, and how supportive your environment is is a really big factor in how comfortable you are to push boundaries or to fail. Mm. Essentially, it's okay to fail, I think, is the point at something. I mean, we see this as an opportunity to create a person that can help um, better the world, we hope, given our attitude to things, and we think that that is... Uh, help in the world, maybe we can make this guy help as well. Yeah. These are various experiments. <laughs> um, I Brain. guess there are different a uh, emotions at play when you, when you decide to have a kid. So there's the I would like a child emotion that's there versus the as a scientist you sit there saying well what is, what is this child going to inherit from us? Having said that, the, the world we live in is so beautiful and so remarkable and for, I guess for Daniel and I, it's such an amazing and beautiful place that I think despite the fact we're destroying it at such a ridiculous pace and with such silliness, um, what is here is, is it's priceless, worth it. it's, it's worth it it's and, worth and it. we would love to share that with, with Darwin so that he can grow up to love and appreciate and explore what is there and what there is left of the diversity but also hopefully protect what's left of the diversity um but no there is and i mean part of buying this place was really to have nature at our doorstep and be in nature and with it um, and for him to have that experience growing up i think is fantastic i mean he's got blue mountains national park for as far as you can you can see as a as a playground so uh, he's a very lucky boy but yes, there is that element of scariness um, as a scientist or as a climate scientist of where it's heading. But in the end, we have to retain hope. Otherwise, we may as well all just stop now. <laughs> you know? So hope is important. And, and I think looking into the future, you want to make sure the people that are here are going to be doing the right things and, and hopefully helping the situation. Yeah, helping to make it a better place. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. So this is a permanent creek that comes down through the hanging swamp. And then it continues. This is the weir and it continues. That's a waterfall, little waterfall there that drops off. And that used to be our water supply. And now we're on rainwater so that we can leave the creek for its self, for, the, for, the, for nature. That means the water quality is quite good. So I see that it's excellent water and that used to be our water source. So there's, those hoses are for water into the house. But we've now switched to rainwater because it got so mucky every time it rained and it's been raining a lot. And, the yeah, and you're downhill years. from a population. That's right. Oh, yeah. I think Darwin wants you. But it goes through swamp, a massive but... hanging swamp up there and so on and through, through the rocks. So the, the water's fine. The crayfish tells us that. Um, Mostly rainwater. But, um, and of course it goes through filters and UV. And the solar panels, were they here? Yes. So this is all off grid. Um, we don't have electricity or water supply here at all, so we have to have our own.
piece of oil, I think. 